Hello and welcome to the solution video to spicy question number 50. So in this question we're told we've got a cylinder with height 12 and the radius is 10 over pi. We're going to imagine that we roll out this cylinder so it becomes a flat rectangle like this. Now the height of that is just 12 and the length across the top of this rectangle would just be the circumference of the circle. You can find the circumference of the circle by doing 2 times pi times the radius. So if we did 2 times pi times 10 over pi, the pi's will cancel, and then 2 times 10 gives you 20. So the length of the rectangle here is 20. Next we're told some information about the cylinder. We know it spins at a constant speed, completing one turn every 3 seconds, and also that these two pens are going to leave trails. The green pen is going to lower at a rate of 1 cm per second, but the red pen is going to rise at 4 thirds of a cm per second. Now since the height of the cylinder is 12 centimetres, the green pen will take 12 seconds to go from the top to the bottom. And if the cylinder does one full rotation every 3 seconds, it will do 4 in 12 seconds. So the trail for the green pen begins at the top of the rectangle. You can start it anywhere along the top of this rectangle, I'm going to go for the top right corner, here. And we know that the cylinder is going to do 4 rotations, so this trail will go across the cylinder 4 times, something like this. Now if we think about the red pen, this one's going to rise up from the bottom, but it will go 4 thirds of a centimetre per second. This will mean it will take 9 seconds to go from the bottom to the top, which means the cylinder will have rotated 3 times. Now the location for the start of the red pen is on the opposite side of the cylinder, and also at the bottom, so it would be here. And those trails are going to go in different directions since it's rising up. So the trail for the red pen needs to go across the cylinder 3 times, so it will look something like this. Next we need to find the intersection point closest to the top of the cylinder and the one closest to the bottom. The one closest to the top will be A, so this one here, and the one closest to the bottom will be B, so this one here. Then we're told that the points A and B are going to be connected directly with a straight line that goes through the cylinder, so not along the surface, and we need to calculate its length. In order to work this out we're going to work on the surface of the cylinder first though. Let's draw onto the diagram in the question where the point A and B might be. So somewhere like this for A, and somewhere like this for B. Then if we draw a vertical line down from A until we reach the level of B, and then an arc across the surface until we hit B, and we could label this corner point here C. A, B and C form a triangle on the surface of this cylinder. So we could also do the same on the rectangle, draw a vertical line down from A until we hit the level of B, and then across to B, and mark on the point C here. What we're going to try and do now is find the lengths of the lines AC and BC. In order to do this I'm going to shrink this diagram down a little bit and just focus on the bottom section. The height of this section will be a quarter of the height of the rectangle from before, since the green line went across 4 times, so just 3 cm. The height of the red one will be a sixth of the total height, so that's 2 cm. We also know this distance here, since that's halfway along the rectangle, so that must be 10 cm. What we will do now is imagine that the bottom left corner of this rectangle is the origin of a set of axes. We're going to treat the green and red lines like their straight line graphs and find their equations. We'll start with the green one. So the gradient of the green one is the change in y over the change in x, the change in y is 3, and the change in x is 20, so it's 3 over 20. And it also crosses at the origin, so the intercept is 0, so the equation of the green line is y equals 3 over 20x. For the red line the gradient's negative, the change in y here is 2, the change in x is 10, so 2 over 10 is a fifth, so it's negative 1 fifth, and it would cross the axis there, which is the left side of that rectangle, at plus 2. So if we treat the red line like it's a straight line graph, its equation is y equals negative a fifth x plus 2. Now if we solve these graphs simultaneously, we'll find the coordinates of the crossing points. So 3 twentieths of x is equal to negative a fifth x plus 2. Let's multiply both sides by 20 first, that will give us 3x on the left, and on the right, negative 4x plus 40. If we add 4x to both sides, we get 7x equals 40 and that gives you x equals 40 over 7. We can get y as well, it's probably easiest using the green equation. So y equals 3 twentieths of x, which means that y equals 3 twentieths times 40 over 7, which simplifies quite nicely to just 6 over 7. Now let's return to the original rectangle. This means the horizontal distance here was 40 over 7. Due to the symmetry of this diagram, that's also this distance here. If we move that down, we can work out the length of BC by doing the whole distance, which is 20, subtract these two smaller ones, which will give you 20, subtract 80 over 7. If we do a similar process to work out the length of AC, 
This vertical distance here and this vertical distance here are both 6 over 7. And if we line these up, it becomes clear that to find AC, we can just do 12 take away 2 lots of 6 over 7. So this length here is 12 take away 12 over 7. Let's add both of those lengths to the diagram in the question. Next, we're going to imagine that we look at the plan view of this diagram. So looking straight down, you would see a circle like this. The points B and C are on the same horizontal level. So we could mark on where they might be, B and C. And then if we mark on two radii like this, and call that the centre. We know the radius of the circle is 10 over pi, we're told that in the question. But we also know the length of this arc here. That's the arc connecting B and C. And we just worked that out, it's 20 take away 80 over 7. Now what we want to do next is try and find this angle here. I'm going to call it theta. We know the length of this arc so we can use the arc length formula and work backwards to find its angle. So the formula is the angle theta over 360 times pi times the diameter, which would be 20 over pi. And this must give us 20 take away 80 over 7. On the left hand side the pi's will cancel so we'll get 20 theta over 360. And if you multiply both sides by 360 then divide by 20, you'll get a theta value of 1080 divided by 7. Which as a decimal is 154.28 and so on degrees. Let's also put this onto the diagram. Now let's draw on a straight line connecting B and C. We can find this length using the cosine rule on the triangle BOC. So BC squared would equal BO squared plus OC squared, which is just 10 over pi squared plus 10 over pi squared, minus two lots of 10 over pi times 10 over pi, and then times cos of the angle, which we know is cos of 154.28 and so on. If you work out the right hand side on your calculator, you get this number here, and then square root both sides will give you a BC value of 6.206 and so on. Let's also add this length to our diagram. Let's also add this to the diagram in the question. So we connect up B and C with a straight line. This one goes through the circle like this. Now in the question, we want to find the direct line from A to C, which will be this one here. We've now formed a right angle triangle where we know the length from A to C, but we also know the length from B to C. So this triangle here. A to C is 12 minus 12 over 7, and BC is the value we just found, this one here. So we can now use Pythagoras to find the length from A to B. So it would be AB squared equals this squared plus this squared. If you work out the right hand side, you get this. And then if you square root it, you get your answer, which is this, to four decimal places. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.